because each of those classes are continuous, you have one, where one class ends, that next class starts, right? Math is everything, and usually students hear that, but they, I think they think that it's cliche when we say everything revolves around math, but literally it does. I mean, if you think of geometry, geometry is the study of shapes. Everything on earth is in a shape. You know, if you think of um, statistics, it's reasoning. Um, if you think of probability, it's about decision making. Will this happen if this happens? So ultimately, if one can understand math, it really can make you logically understand, you know, everything about the universe. When I started here last fall, um, I was told that I was going to be on this grant for the spring, and I wasn't, totally didn't know, I wasn't a part of writing the grant, I wasn't prepared for this new idea um, about this course. I attended um, a conference in the fall um, in Louisville about um, accelerating the coursework for students who entered at a developmental or a pre-college um, level for mathematics. When they first put it on my schedule and it said accelerated, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, this is a class for Einstein, you got the wrong person in there. But um, when I finally got in there and I um, saw the syllabus and how everything was scheduled out and laid out, I was like, oh, okay, this might be easier than what I thought it was going to be. I kind of psyched myself out thinking I couldn't do it. We lectured only two days a week. Um, and the other two days a week we did was totally focused on students. It was all about group work, it was um, group quizzes, um, they had the opportunity to um, interface with one another on a topic that we had presented in class the previous day. Group work really helps because the teacher can only tell you so many ways, but when you have somebody else that gets it and is helping you, you know, you're getting a little more respect from your peers as well. Exactly! exactly. Everyone. It takes the faculty, it takes the peers, because a lot of times, and this is a dynamic we, we've observed in a class, we have a student who's uh, Blake. He does not understand things when Sarah or I say it, but if one of his classmates tell him, he's like, oh, I got it, it clicks. So anytime Blake raises his hand, we call on a student. Okay, you, explain it to Blake. Sometimes when like another person can explain it to me, like I need to, to really understand it, I need to like really get into depth into a problem. Like when I kind of go past a problem real quick or we just go past something real fast and I don't understand it usually. Yeah, she put it in just a little bit different perspective than I did and all of a sudden the light bulb went off, right? And then Alexis, how does that help you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because um, if you can explain it to somebody else, that means you know it. So if you just, well here let me tell you, and then you tell them how to do it, it means you know it yourself, like you know the words backwards and forwards. Exactly. So you just let somebody exactly. else know how to do it. This works for both of the students. Now this person becomes a teacher, this person becomes a student, and again, you sit back and you just facilitate the greatness. On Fridays, we didn't have class on Fridays, but they still had a project assignment that they had to turn in every Friday. So is this always this kind of overarching um, scaffolding projects um, where one part would uh, would lead to the next part on the next Friday, and the next that would lead to the next part on the next Friday. Like seeing the English assignment, you know what I'm saying? Like that makes that can make sense to me, but like. Like just seeing numbers just you know, makes sense to me. I don't know why. We typically call them math avoiders. They're people that don't like math, yeah. that don't, um, that avoid it at all costs. <laughs> How do you feel about math now? How did you feel oh, about math before? I, 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 I got you. I got you. I got you. I still don't like it. Okay, so at first with math, you know, I was all scared of it, you know, people be throwing numbers at me, I start sweating and stressing. And now I'm a mathematician. <laughs> Most instructors' biggest issue with students is they're not motivated. They don't want to do anything. They're lazy. Well, motivate them. What are you modeling, you know, to correct that? Because we place these expectations on students, but we don't even, we assume that they understand what we, what we expect of them, but we don't model what we actually expect of them. A lot of the students um, that started at the beginning of the semester, their attitude towards mathematics just in the fact that they don't avoid it anymore. It might not be their favorite subject, but at least it's something that they feel confident 
about. I just recently went to a student success um, summit and I forget the person's name, but he said one of his student learning outcomes and his syllabus is that his students fall in love. And I thought that was absolutely amazing. And I think that should be every instructor's ultimate goal is to make your student fall in love. If you don't care, I'm not gonna care because obviously you don't care about me, so why should I care about what you're teaching me? But when you see, you have that aspect of that, that caring, that love that's put into the course, it's like, oh, they love what they do. They make me want to love what they do, and it makes me want to pay attention more and be more involved in the class. Uh, a lot of teachers was not like enthused to teach us, and it's like when you come to class every day, they give you like that energy, like that force field that you actually need to want to learn. And then it's early, too. So it's 9 o'clock every morning. Like, a lot of us don't even be wanting to get up to come to class, but like just for that energy to always be there every morning, it makes you just want to come to class. I really felt like they cared about me. We just because of the way that they acted and responded towards, you know, when you needed questions, they were eager to help you. They were like, over there, quick. I've been in classrooms where you could tell that the teacher really didn't care if this guy passed or if this girl passed because they were just like, you know, oh well. If you don't love that subject, you ain't gonna really teach. If you're passionate, if you love kids, you gonna teach them the subject that you love. So it's 100%. The fact that I had two teachers and the fact that Brittany Motley was in the class and my freshman year in college, I tried to find her, but she was always booked. And the fact that I had her and then on the top of that, Miss Sarah was fun. And I was able to talk to her and them together, they helped me see things from different perspectives so that I could truly understand the material. My tutoring sessions can turn into an advising session, a counseling session. Essentially, I will turn into a chameleon for whatever the student needs. Why? Anybody want to elaborate? Well, I think a lot of our success, I will have to admit, has been the magic that has happened between Brittany Motley and myself. It's really kind of by chance. Um, Brittany had a practicum um, that she needed to complete. I was thrown into this course that I needed um, help with, and it, you know, um, it just happened. I had the content expertise, and Brittany had the learning support expertise. And those two things together is what made the course um, what it is. I, I like um, being able to laugh, and I never really laugh at a math class unless it's my peers telling a joke, but when it's the teacher doing it, it's just awesome and it's fun, it's all fun. My personality, I'm very goofy and loud and outspoken and I want and um, when I step into a math class, I feel like I have to, you know, like turn it down and be, you know, like more inside myself and not act out as much. But when you bring that aspect of play into the class, it makes me feel comfortable because that's what type of person I am. I'm very playful and I'll remember something if it was geared towards more like an activity setting or like a group discussion that you know, turned into a joke or something before I remember something that was just like spoon, like read off of, of a paper to me or like put on the board as like notes or something. I enjoy coming to their class because it's really an interaction between students and the instructors. I always tell people to write a math biography, a math autobiography. How was math for you? I remember when I, when did you fall in love with math? When did you fall out of love with math? Or were you ever in love with math? But I want people to reflect on when they were a student. What did you really need? You didn't need the content, you needed the development more so. Anybody can read a book and get what they need, but you need the proper tools. I was able to correlate basketball statistics with math statistics. So that made it easier for me to grasp because it was relating something I'm used to with something I'm not so used to, and it helped bring it all together. If I feel like a teacher is distant, then I feel kind of weird approaching you about something I don't understand that you feel like I should know and I feel embarrassed. A lot of times teachers think that professionalism means that you don't bond with your students, you know, or that you have to keep a separation. But let be very, very transparent in front of your students. I let them know. I struggled in math. I failed before. I did really bad. Let them know my background to let them know that I was just like you and I did it. You know what I'm saying? So be very transparent. Then after the relationship is established, then okay, what's going on with your assignment? How can we work on this? In other class that I observed where teachers just, you know, just go on right away with the teaching or the lecture. 
I saw that the students are kind of bored and there's a lot of pressure. But um, having that connection with the teachers, it's like comfortable. It's like, hey, I don't get this, you know, can you show me again? And they have no problem repeating what they told me a thousand times already again to the point where I can understand it. You'll have someone who is an excellent mathematician, however, they don't have the emotional intelligence, and so while they're an expert in, they, in their field, they don't know how to appeal to the student. So it is very, very important that faculty encompass both of those, or if they can't, that they get a supplemental instructor who can supplement for that, or you know, where one can do the other, kind of the mother-father role um, to raise the child. I like when they're there checking in because it it's like that, I don't want to say it's like being a mom, but it's like that maternal instinct that you want to make sure that your child or your student is on top of everything they need to be on top of because you want to see them succeed. One of my favorite mathematicians is Socrates, of course. He is um, a Greek philosopher and of course my favorite Socratic quote is, I know that I know nothing. And um, he essentially says that's what the beginning of wisdom is. How, how is it easier? Because I'm passing now. And why do you think that is though? Do you asking know? questions. Because you're asking questions. You can get involved. Communicate in the class. It's asking a lot of questions. Um, drawing something out of the student. In our initial class, the first thing that we did um, is we learned their names. And we went around the room and we memorized each person's name and we modeled how we memorized. We repeated it. We um, kept going over. We tried to identify with the person. It was like, okay, tell me something about you. Okay, now I can remember this. We did a lot of stuff, and then after we was done, that was the metacognition. We was like, okay, what did I do to learn your names? I kind of like slid through the cracks all in high school, but here, see, I can ask a question and not feel dumb about it because you'd be like, oh, Yay, yeah, I got you. Right? It's a safe place. Safe place. Totally a safe Ooh, place. Ooh, awesome. High school teacher just gave me grades because I was an athlete. So now, actually, I actually got to work in the class. You can get involved in the class, yes. In the past, the class was on the computer strictly, and we never got oh, yeah, that homework. homework on and the it's always a module. There's always a quiz. You always had an assignment. Don't yeah, worry. That okay. XYZ. When you put a topic that somebody has struggled with um, on a screen, it overcomplicates. <laughs> It makes that, it exacerbates that complication or that struggle because they don't have a human being that they can talk to. They don't have, you know, it's all, it's just them interfacing with this screen. You can very often pick up that it's not a, um, it's not necessarily a conceptual error that they've made. Um, it's just maybe a little arithmetic error. But the screen doesn't can't tell you the difference between a conceptual error and arithmetic error. You have to develop an emotional intelligence. It's not enough just to be an expert in your field. You have to understand psychology. You have to understand human behavior because you're working with humans. Why not understand them? I have to be able to hear it and also see it to understand it. And I also like group work because you know the teacher can only tell you in so many ways how to do it and what to do because they're a math teacher you know with math they get it so they don't get why you don't get it make them fall in love because the student is not going to engage if they're not in love with it if they're not passionate about it if they don't like it you know, i believe it was you actually was there at the beginning of this class you said that when you tell yourself you can't do something it's going to be harder for you to actually be able to do it and then so when I started to tell myself, you know, I can do it, it's, it's not going to be hard. I actually started to get it more and I actually started to grasp the, um, the information better. Yes. And I was able to work with that information. Yes, because your brain believes everything you tell. Because many teachers assume that their students don't know anything and that they're the expert. No, we're all in here together and we're all on the same level. I just may have a tool or two that I could tell you you know, to pull you up, but you may have a tool for me as well. So once a teacher kind of steps back from that authoritative, I have to run the class, I have to do this, I have to do that, and understand that, let's facilitate this so we all can grow together, it becomes a very, very organic experience. I've always had that connections where teachers would approach me and they're like, you get this, and they work with me like Miss Sarah and Brittany are doing. And um, so it was, it was kind of like the same, but last year, my first year, all my math teachers, they didn't want to connect or have that type of um, relationship where I could understand the material. And with those two, I truly got it. It opened my eyes because now, like, I caught 
even my mom. I don't want to sound like a mama's girl, but when I call my mom and tell her, Mom, I made a 95 on my math quiz, she's like freaking out, like, oh my gosh, you, you made a 95. I told, you, I told you you could do it, my baby doing math. Like, she's just so hyped because she knows what I struggle with before I got into this class. That's what makes education empowering is understanding that everything is within you. So essentially a teacher is not someone who is telling you things, but it, a teacher is a facilitator who is drawing things out of you. And that's how it should be. But just watching that independent work and that empowerment um, in action, yeah, that's awesome. That's been, this has been one of the most satisfying and the most rewarding experiences I've ever had in my professional career. It was good just getting to going from her from the SI point and, and watching her model the class. So I got to learn a lot of things from the students as well as the instructor. And it was all a very good vibe. It was not hard working with the faculty. It wasn't hard working with the students. Um, we all got to know each other. I think it was just a very, very organic experience. It was a good dynamic. So it all really worked out. Me and, cause me and Math, we, we had a hate, hate relationship at first, but now it ain't even a love, hate. it's a love, love relationship with Math now. So we could, that's my dog. Numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>Thank you for watching KSU Voices inside an accelerated math class. This video has been produced, recorded, and directed by Toy Creel. It serves as multimedia support for Brittany Motley's 2014 Kellogg Institute Final Report, improving students' math success through engagement strategies implemented in supplemental instruction. Special thanks to Sue Stamper, Loretta Campbell, Sarah Ellis, Primary Instructor, and the USA Funds Grant. Another special thanks to all the students in the Math 17201 Accelerated Contemporary Mathematics course.